Good morning. I hope you're ready because it's regex day. We'll continue our work on a sharding statsd proxy. This time we're going to lightly parse the statsd messages using regular expressions. Once parsed, we can normalize the message to ensure consistent sharding. So if you recall from a previous video that two different statsd messages um, might have the same metric name and the tags, host and country, but they may have the tags in a different order. So we need to make sure that both of these messages shard to the same statsd server because we want the aggregation to sum up these counts. C is a count and they're incremented by one. That's what the message asks the statsd server to do. So we want to make sure that even though country comes first here and then last here, that these two values will result in users.logins having a value of two on that one statsd server. If it got sharded to separate statsd servers, uh, they would each do their own independent aggregation and the last one to write to the time series database would win, would win which means users' logins for these tags would have a value of one instead of two as it should be. So that's why we need to normalize, uh, which is what we're gonna do in this video. So when I first thought about using regular expressions to parse the message, I envisioned specifying capture groups so I could easily loop over the matched tags if there were any. The metric doesn't have to have tags. But captures in Rust don't seem to support that, as we'll see. So let's start there. I did a search for regex in Rust and found the regex crate. One of the first examples in the doc is iterating over capture groups, which seems to be exactly what I want. Um, so here's the example code from the doc, and here's the code adapted to parse statsd messages. So if you notice in the regular expression, we start with um, more than one or more characters that are not a comma. That'll take care of the metric name in the beginning. And then we have some nested parentheses here. Basically what this will be is the entire tags portion. This one would match um, a leading comma followed by a tag name, an equal sign, and a tag value. That's the goal. Um, I wanted to be able to loop over this third parentheses you know, worth of capture groups. But it looks like the regex crate only returns the last string match for this third capture group, as we'll see. So when I run this, oh, not reset, I just did that, run. Okay, here's the metric that it parsed off, which is what we want, users.logins. And here's the entire tags portion. So it did actually get from the second paren to its closing partner. Got those off, right? Host and country from right here. And when I asked it to show me the results from the third capture group, the one right before the comma, this is the one that's supposed to be able to repeat. One or zero or more times, zero or more tags. Um, it only returns the last one, which is country. So that's unfortunate. Um, other languages like PHP will give you an array of the strings matched by that capture group. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but it looks like we have to try another approach. So since the statsd message format is pretty simple, we can use splitting to separate the different portions of the message. So we can split on a comma and know that the metric name will be the first in that resulting list. And then the tags, since they're delimited by commas. And then we can also split on colon to ensure that we pull off this last trailing portion, which is the statsd type specifier. And in the case of counts, the increment value of one. Okay, so let's try that. I'm gonna copy in some code to here. Um, let me copy this out just to make sure I have it intact. Actually, I already do, good. All right, so 
let's try splitting on comma or colon and do that and then I'm going to copy some other stuff so we can just print it and I'll walk through what, what I'm pasting in. So we're creating a new regular expression pattern. Regex new basically compiles this pattern and I'm doing an expect because if this regex fails to compile I want to know about it. The program can't run. Um, some of the examples show unwrap being used um, which is fine but I just wanted to customize the error message that would show if it bombed. Okay, compiling this for use. And then I found a split method, split function, and I'm passing in the metric text. Looks good. Um, so let's see here. Split returns an iterator, it seems. Let me pull that up. It returns an iterator of substrings of text delimited by a match of the regular expression. Right. So since that would normally return an iterator, I'm, I couldn't find evidence of what collect really does, but it looks like collect returns the underlying data structure, which is likely a vec of structs, or a vec of uh, string references. There we go. <laughs> so um, since we do want to pull off the first uh, metric portion and then pull off the other portion and then sort the tags. Um, it seems like we do need something like a vec to work with. So let's see if we can pull off the uh, metric using remove. And I have a note here. I forgot to copy that comment in. So what's important here is our regex may parse something, but we also kind of need to ensure that it is what we expected. So in the future, we need to handle the case where parts um, isn't a vec with two elements or two or more elements. So we definitely should have at least two being the metric name and then the, the type portion. We may not have any tags associated with this metric. Tags are not required. So we need to handle that case. And once we do that, we can ensure that parts.remove gives us what we expect, which is a, a string reference or a string. I'm going to have a reference to that string. And then pop may not have any elements to pop off. And then it would be a null or something like that, I think. So, But once we verify that vec has two or more, these two will be safe. All right, let's see what we have. Let's make sure I save it and then run. OK. I actually have this note up here because I ran through this before. Um, cannot borrow parts as mutable as it is not declared as mutable. So, do because we do want to modify parts. We want to pull off the beginning and pop off the end. Let's see if that fixes that. Okay, we have metric of users logins and then the the type stuff at the end of one pipe C, which is what we want. Good. Um, so now let's see what is in the vec now. So let's loop over for part in parts. We're going to print each part exactly what we want. We have host web server and country US, just the tags up here. All right. Now we can do, that's not how you spell parts, parts.sort, and we'll print it again to see what the result is. Oh, right. Oh, hi. I guess, um, I can't remember if semicolons are terminators or separators. Right. Um, yeah, I think I have comments to this. I just wanted to show you what it would look like. 
So move occurs because parts has a type vec, which does not implement the copy trait. Um, parts was moved. Okay, so that's that's interesting. I didn't know that for loops. I guess in this case for Rust, a for loop is a different scope. So parts was moved into this for loop scope and then um, we attempted to borrow after a move. It's kind of interesting. So I don't know another way to do this, but usually on certain types there's an iterator method, and that seems to work. So I guess this last one would actually have been moved into this second for loop scope, but that's that's okay for now. These are just debugging statements. But it's good to know that a for loop will move um, a variable. And if you don't know what move is in Rust, that's um, like the borrow checker stuff where it tries to ensure that you don't try to um, modify a variable uh, in more than one place unexpectedly it tries to prevent you from from having like data race conditions and i did not explain that well but the rust book is pretty good on explaining uh, borrowing and references and that sort of thing all right so we have our tags and that they, they did sort correctly that's awesome it looks like um, the vec string reference um, implementation correctly chooses the right comparison function. Since it's dealing with a vec of strings, it knows how to compare strings, which is great. We didn't have to do that ourselves. Love it. Okay. So we pulled off the metric and the trailing types. We sorted our tags. Now what we want to do um, is join them together. We only want to join a portion together because we only want to shard on this part of the string. We don't want um, to shard on the whole string because we wouldn't want uh, a count with an increment of two to be sharded to a separate server, which would then mean, lead to data, data loss. Two separate aggregations happening on two different servers, thus one squashing the other with a later write. So we only want to shard based on the first part of the string before the type section of the statsd message. All right, so here's what we'll do. We will, we have sorted. I think we're gonna have to change this to be an iterator so we don't move it. So we're gonna push, well, insert or unshift metric back onto the beginning of parts and then it looks like um, vex have a join function which is super handy so parts.join on a what does this do a raw string i think that's what that does i don't remember I can't remember what that's for let's see what that does oh okay Maybe I don't need that. Let me see. Oh, I forgot to print it out. That's good. All right, printing out shardable string. There we go. Okay. Users.logins with country sorted first and host second, because the example had host first and country second. Okay, that is exactly what we want. Now we have a string to run through our sharding function, which we'll do in the next video. We're going to um, set up a simple sharding setup and um, run our strings through it. Actually, maybe we should verify. Oh, right. I need to plug this back into my previous example code. Hmm. This video is already starting to get long, so maybe I'll do that in the next video. We will uh, merge this logic back into our never ending read loop here because we looped and kept receiving data. So we'll plug the parsing and normalization logic into here. And then we'll start hooking up a simple sharding 
function. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. Hope this was uh, educational. Yes. Take care.